what I want to do now in the, the, the second segment here of the o, uh, the Omega, the discipleship, the uh, disciples of the Omega or end time disciples under the o, Alpha and Omega series of uh, part 22 is to look a little bit at one of our members down in, Lo, in Louisiana but by the name of Brother James Hanukkah. Uh, more specifically, look at some things that his mother wrote in her Bible. Uh, she is his. She has passed years ago. I suspect. I don't know whether or not James has, Brother Hanukkah has gone into detail about this. He did tell me that at one point in time he was not saved. That his mother is, if I'm not mistaken, the wife of a Methodist pastor preacher, and they're both deceased, uh, and that he just wasn't into it. Um, at the time, uh, but he has since come to the Lord and he's also come to this ministry, uh, but he's in possession of a Bible and she left a lot of notes in her Bible, but in the very beginning pages of a Bible, we're going to open up some things in just a moment to show you uh, how she opens up her notes within the Bible. And I want to dedicate this segment to uh, 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 Brother Victor, who is a sister Evangelist Meyer's uh, son. Because Evangelist Meyer's son is like Brother Hanukkah was years ago. Uh, didn't come to the church, didn't, didn't follow his mother's faith, and on and on and on and on. But now Brother Hanukkah has come. Uh, but Brother Victor, who is the son of Evangelist Meyer, uh, we're going we're gonna to dedicate this teaching uh, to him that he might come and be as strong in the faith as now Brother James Hanukkah is down in Louisiana. Uh, from his uh, mother's writing. Now, his, his mother, one of the re he gave me this a couple of weeks ago, and I've taken some time, little by little on each day, to take a look at uh, what she wrote. And she's got a lot of notes, but I'm going to look particularly at the very opening pages of her Bible, the very beginning of the Bible, before we begin to read the verses, of her understanding of the seven-day creation, that it was a that it was a thousand day per day, seven uh, seven thousand year process of creation. Now, Mr. Engineer, if you could put that up for just a second, this is her. This is Brother James Hanukkah's mother's writing in her Bible. So her her, her script is not all that easy to discern, uh, but. Um, as you can see at the very top, I don't know if we can focus in on right there at the top. It says the 7,000 years of human history. Uh, and then there's another statement that says chapter page 16. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that says, display or truth. Um, exactly that, that, that I don't really understand what that writing is, but Mr. Engineer, let's go back to the, to the, uh, to the, to the, the page full, full script part of it. Now, what we're looking at is sort of like a, a, the, the, in the, in the upper left-hand corner being the source of all things, uh, and it says in that upper left-hand corner, the creation week. And then in the lower left-hand corner uh, is day number one. Now, one of the reasons why I take me a little time to be able to present is because I want to—I certainly want to do honor and justice to uh, Brother Hanukkah's mother is I know that she was Methodist. And I also know that, yes, bring that up, Mr. Engineer. Uh, I know that being Methodist, and she would have been under the influence of uh, the founder of the Methodist Church, an Englishman by the name of John Wesley. Uh, John Wesley, I think had been Anglican of something of that nature, uh, and there's a place in London called Alder's Gate, and I've been to London several times, and each time I've missed the opportunity to get to Alder's Gate. But John Wesley developed, uh, he said he was praying at Alder's Gate, and he felt this very warm feeling come over him, which he termed as the second work of grace. And the second work of grace, according to John Wesley, uh, was that you first got saved and then you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is really a Pentecostal, what the Pentecostals teach now. Most Pentecostals died in the world. Pentecostals tongue talkers to, to, to no end do not, do not realize that really they are Methodists and the foundation of the Pentecostal faith is John Wesley's second work of grace. Uh, having said that, John Wesley and, of course, his brother Charles Wesley has written a large number of hymns for the church, a very powerful hymns of the church, 
And John Wesley came along at a time of Jonathan Edwards and Charles Spurgeon and a large no- number of English and American Eng- uh, reformers and uh, the, the, the first and second great awakening here in America. So, uh, so my study took me to, if Brother Hanukkah's mother was a Methodist, then she would, her explanation here looks like someone had taught her this, the seven days of creation. Day number one, Mr. Engineer, if you could put it back up again. If we have the cre- the creation works, right? Then we have day number one, uh, uh, that's a thousand years. Day number two, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh. And each one of these days consists of a thousand years. Now, this does not have to be singularly a Methodist ideal because I've studied this as well uh, in, in other contexts. It, it's a biblical context in one regard that, this, that the creation process uh, was a process of over, over, that when God said, and the first, when Moses wrote that the morning and the evening were the first day uh, was a conclusion of a thousand years. Now, hang tight to that. Because it's going to be very important when we also go uh, to the scriptures where Peter writes about the thousand years and, and also John the Revelator writes about the 1,000 year reign of peace uh, as a day. But th- th- so this does not necessarily have to be something that John Wesley himself would have, uh, would have espoused. Oh, but perhaps her local, or maybe her brother Hanukkah's father may have taught this because when people write in the Bible like that, it's usually because some pastor or preacher is teaching it and they write it down because they find it very important. And this is an, you know, the timeline of creation from the time of Adam to the time of, you know, to the time of Abraham, uh, you know, at the time of the, the curse in the garden, a number of people have a lot of questions about that. For instance, if there was seven thousand years, there was a thousand years rather between the time that God created the fish of the fowl and the beast of the field and man. There's a thousand years, and they were roaming the earth. The fowls, the eagles were flying, and there was no man. Or well, you know, so that is one way of looking at it. Quickly, because our time is up, we're going to have to come back to this at another segment. Um, but I want India to take me to Psalms number um, uh, 90, verse 4, in Psalms number 90, which is potentially where either Brother Hanukkah's father taught this or some other evangelist or someone that come through the church or someone that had influence uh, in an evangel- evangelical way teaching uh, and and. Uh, Brother Hanukkah's mother wrote those, and, and this is the opening segment of her Bible that I just showed you a moment ago. But you see here in Psalms chapter 90, verse 4, now this is an unusual Psalms because in the book of Psalms, most of the Psalms, at least a large segment of them, are attributed to David, the, the, you know, the, the son of Jesse, the king of, of, of Israel, the mighty king who slew Goliath. Then there are a large number of Psalms that are attributed to Asaph, who was a musician for David, who was one who took care of music and, and perhaps some of the songs that David may have written or he may have written for David. But this is very unusual, Psalms 90, because most biblical scholars believe that Psalms 90 was written by Moses. And Moses writes in this Psalm, in verse 4, Psalms 90, he said, For a thousand years in thy sight, uh, but it's yesterday when it is past. And as a watch in the night. Now, a watch is a three-hour segment of time that happens within the course of a night. For instance, the time between 3 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the morning is considered the fourth watch. The time from 12 midnight to 3 o'clock in the morning is considered the third watch. The time from 9 o'clock at night to 12 o'clock at night is considered the second watch. And from 6 o'clock in the evening to 9 o'clock in the evening is considered the first watch. So they're fourth watches. So uh, a number of of people um, have taken this, and I myself studied it years ago, and have not ruled on it one way or the other, that a thousand years, when we say, uh, when Moses said that the creation was simply one day, was he simply saying that the process of what God created in the first day took a thousand years and that the totality of creation 
was a total of 7,000 years. But Moses says this, but look at Peter, who has also a first-hand look at, at Jesus close up. In 2 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 8, Mr. Engineer, if you will take us, uh, ch chapter 3 rather, verse 8, if you'll take us there, I want to show you what Peter says about this. Peter says, regarding this issue that's in Brother Hanukkah's mother's Bible, he said, but beloved, be not ignorant of one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Now, the way Peter expresses this is that in God's time equation, if God can, if we can try to relate to how God, understand how God relates to time, as far as God is concerned, a thousand years is as one day. Whether he meant that is in terms of his brevity, that, that a thousand years to God is just like one day passing in, in terms of the fact that God's understanding of brevity and longevity. And Peter wanted us to be able to be mindful of that. Um, and so if that is true, then when God created and Moses was told by God that the creation process was a seven day event, was he talking about seven segments of a thousand and the creation itself took 7,000 years to perfect? We'll come back to that as well. But I think the other thing that's important for us and important perhaps for Brother Hanukkah and for all of us immediately here is that John the Revelator writes in John's gospel, uh, in Revelation rather, chapter 20, um, verse 2, uh, that, um, that and, and, and he laid hold, being he, being Almighty God, uh, the angel of God, rather, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years um, and cast him into the bottom. And so the thousand years is there again. And so, you know, we look at the number three as an, as an important factor of God, the number seven as an extraordinary important factor of God. Would it be seven, 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 or seven thousand? And and then of course we look at the number forty as an important fact of God. The number twelve as an important fact of God. But a thousand years has not gotten the same kind of attention as twelve, forty, three, and seven. But here we find that a thousand years is very important. And if you go on, Mr. Engineer, cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, set a seal upon him that he should see the nation no more. Till what? A thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he shall be loosed a little season. So having said that, that it is the teaching that I have been doing that has caught Brother Hanukkah's attention. I don't know how long he listened to me before he joined our church and ministry was that we are going to reign and rule with Christ for a thousand years, which is what it says in, in Revelation 26 and following. So the 1,000-year reign of peace, does the 1,000-year reign of peace correspond uh, to the 1,000 years it took for day one, the 1,000 years it took for day two of creation, the 1,000 years it took for day three of creation? So let me try to wrap this up. Uh, it's important that those of us who understand that we're going to live a thousand years. It, it, many would argue, and we did argue this in seminary and other venues, that, well, why did Moses say the evening and the morning were the first day? Did it take a thousand years before the first morning uh, arrived and the first evening arrived? We really don't know the way the earth, if you will, rotated around the sun where there was a thousand years of light. We don't know. So this is a great argument. But I want to commend Brother Hanukkah's mother on such a great theological question. And she found it the most important thing by putting it at the very front of her Bible. See, it says right there that, uh, you, you know, present it to, that's up at the top of the page on the right-hand side, present it to, by, and the date that it was presented. And then up above that, she's got the very beginning of the whole idea of the seven days of creation. Now, uh, so this is not necessarily a, a Methodist ideology or something that John Wesley himself would have taught. Um, I, I'm not sure how, whether 
she derived of this, and most of her writing, quite frankly, it's hard for me to determine. I've looked at it. I need a handwriting expert to really tell me exactly what the words are so I can then understand exactly what it is it's saying. But I can tell you this, it is most profound. It is beyond what a general church person, I understand that she was a pastor's wife, so therefore she would have had an intense interest in, in biblical studies, but even beyond that, she must have had an intense interest in the timing of God. And the thousand years would be an important uh, PowerPoint for her. And one of the last things that I believe that Brother, Brother Hanukkah said, she said to him, was that he would live with Christ for a thousand years. And then she passed. I'm not sure how soon after that she passed. So, and, and so that's the thing he's hanging on to as well as his mother's teaching. Um, I, and I want to say this also to Brother Hanukkah. You know, he was lost and didn't understand the depths of his mother. He didn't understand her spirituality. He didn't understand the great woman that she was. He didn't. And, and now that he is past, she has passed, all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but he recognized what a great treasure was in his life. But Brother Hanukkah, there are so many young men, like Victor, who is the son of Evangelist um, uh, uh, Myers, or like the sons of Evangelist Hundley. They don't realize how great their mothers are. So I'm going to take, tell, in the honor of Brother Hanukkah's mother, every mother that has a son, and he's lost right now, I guess the last thing Brother Hanukkah's mother ever thought is she, he would get hooked up with a preacher like me. But I can guarantee you she'd be stomped down approving of me as a pastor and as a man of God. And I'm praying for every mother out there who's got sons and daughters who are lost. And, uh, but you're praying for them. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Now, don't give in. Don't bend in. Don't compromise. Keep on praying. And so we thank uh, Brother Hanukkah for sharing those notes. I got a lot of other notes. I'll maybe share some of them at another time. I'm really trying to decipher the handwriting, so I, I don't, want, don't want to do his mother any disservice. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro, or Anderson Cooper, or Rachel Maydow, or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.